Interesting you bring up the, the Arteta rumours that have been doing the rounds over the last couple of hours. Sky Sports in England reporting that Arteta or Arsenal have reached out and saying that he will not be leaving at the end of the season. But as Luis says, mm. it's Barcelona. The mm. managers are going to be linked galore. Uh, Rafa Marquez, who's currently in charge of Barca B, so their second string side, has been linked to the job. This is what you have to say. You can't say no to an opportunity like this. The most important thing is to keep preparing because it's my second season as a coach here. Preparing in case that moment comes. <laughs> this has not gone down too well, Sid. <laughs> I mean, how can it possibly go down too well? Now, mm -hmm. to be fair, I'm going to defend Rafa Marquez a little bit here. He is, as you've just said, the coach of Barcelona B. His team is playing on the Saturday night after Barcelona's first team has played. After that game, with this news breaking, with him unprepared for it, he goes into a press conference and he's asked this question. And in a way, he's on a bit of a hiding to nothing. What can he say? He can't say, oh, I don't want that job. You must be <laughs> joking. There's no way I'm going in there. He's got to be careful, of course, about upsetting people, about looking like he's, he's kind of being not very tactful. And to be honest, I think he does come across as not very tactful. I don't think it's handled particularly well. But I must admit, I feel for him a little bit because I think he's thrown into a position where you kind of can't win no matter what you say. Of course, and also, by the way, he's telling the truth. Of course he would love this job. Why would he not want the opportunity to have this job? That's why he's at Barcelona B now, because in part, obviously it prepares him for any other jobs, but in part, in particular, it puts him in line for the Barcelona first team job. Now, here's one of the things, though, and a lot of what we've talked about in terms of Xavi's deci decision is about the timing, about the fact that he's saying it now, but he's actually not going for four more months. Rafa Marquez looks like a much more natural choice, doesn't he? If you're caught mid-season mm. with no money, and the need to make a decision fast. And so if Xavi had last night said, I'm going and I'm going now, then Rafa Markev without doubt becomes the natural choice. Why? Because you can do it. If you've got time to deal with things between now and the summer to get the kind of profile of manager that you want, then actually I think Rafa Marquez's opportunities are greatly greatly diminished. Uh, we heard Sid, didn't we, in our pre-match show saying that he thinks it'll be Thomas Tuchel who will be taking <laughs> over at the start of next season. Uh, Lu Luis, what's, what, what's your preference? Would you want someone like a, a Rafa Marquez coming in and looking, of course, a good, great connection with the club to try and get things back on track or someone with a lot more experience? After what we've seen of uh, Xavi and what he's been going through uh, in the last year and a half, you, we have to think that football doesn't have remember. That they forget about everything. And it doesn't matter if you've been a fantastic legend uh, of the game or a fantastic player for the club. You need to bring that experience on. Uh, Rafa Marquez has been at the second team. I'm not, I, I'm not saying that he could uh, not be ready for, for handling the the, 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 the dressing room of Barcelona and the way and the style of play of Barcelona because, of course, he knows very well. But I think that right now he's needed someone who can, uh, he's got experience, experience with the, with the press conference, experience with handling uh, players, experience handling years of uh, dealing with di different situations and experience of what it is to be uh, a, a Barcelona manager and knowing that this is a club with a lot of history, with a lot of pressure, and you're going to be in a tough situation during the next coming years. So I think someone with a little bit more experience will be a better, better match. Sid, so we discussed this before, and I can't remember what the answer was. Laporte didn't want Xavi. It was not his first choice. Who was his first choice? Well, bear in mind that, that Joanna Porter took over and, he, and Xavi wasn't his first choice because, of course, Xavi was part of the, of the electoral candidacy of Victor Fodd, who, who had taken on Gian Laporta. So his first choice is he had been looking at, and this, this actually I think is interesting for the situation now, Joan Laporta had been looking at bigger name managers. Mm. He'd been looking at people like Pochettino. He'd been looking at people like Hansi Flick. He'd been looking, he, his, his kind of dream, I think, in the long run would, would, would be someone like Jurgen Klopp, but of course that's not possible, certainly in the short term. And so I, I think that Xavi was, was someone that he knew was beneficial for him in the sense that Xavi is hugely popular. Xavi is someone that gives you a degree as a pre president. And, and I, I don't want to make this sound too cynical, but there's a degree of cynicism in this. As a president, he's someone who gives you protection. You're getting someone in who is popular. You're getting someone in who symbolizes the club. You're getting someone in who all the fans are going to go, 
yes, we're behind this guy. We're on this guy's side. And actually what Laporta had said, and he was unhappy about, or well, not unhappy about, but he kind of apologised for, was hanging on to Ronald Koeman so long. And bear in mind, by the way, that Ronald Koeman was also a club legend. The guy that scores the winning goal when they win the 1992 European Cup, the first European Cup in their history. So there's no guarantee, however big a player you are, that that protection lasts beyond... Of course, the results. And that's one of the things that Xavi has found. And I think it's been hard for Xavi to accept that degree of pressure, to accept that degree of criticism, to accept that sense that people are looking at him and thinking, this isn't very good. Because, of course, quite naturally, he's thinking, but all those things I did, you know, that care that I have for this club, the fact that this club is everything, it's quite hard. But as you say, Laporta's idea wasn't necessarily him to start with. But that became a useful option. And that's not to say he didn't want Xavi to succeed. Of course he did. But he initially was looking at it in terms of much higher profile names. And I think that if Barcelona can pull it off, that is where they will go next. Uh, we, could, we could talk about this and we will talk about it, I'm sure, <laughs> uh, a lot over the next few days and weeks and months. But for now, we'll say thank you very much uh, to sit. Luis, you're done. Hey! hey that was it. <laughs>